How convenient that this just arrived right before I wanted to start filming the video about this, this thing. Please don't be ugly, please don't be ugly. It looks amazing. Hi, hello. I actually filmed a whole intro for this video, but as so often I just rambled and didn't make a point, so you have to deal with phone quality voiceover alley right now. I'm at my parents' house, hence the fancy background, so yeah, hi. I thrifted this plain college jacket with a very specific project in mind. A few weeks ago I ordered these cute patches of the main characters of Jujutsu Kaisen. They were shipped from Canada, which I had to pay customs for, which made them double the price as I originally bought them for, so yeah, that was unfortunate. And also, searching for anime merch is quite a gamble because it's either really really ugly or super expensive and you never know if it's low quality or not. So once again, I figured that I had to do it myself. This week I'm trying to hand embroider some patches for the back of this jacket. My initial plan was to put these little ones I bought on the chest of the jacket, hence I'm cutting out the little Yuji. Don't worry, that was a very shitty old shirt and I gave it a new life as a cleaning cloth. But my style of embroidery didn't match those of the bought patches, so I have another plan for the chest emblem. That will probably be in part two of this video, but yeah. Let's see how the first try turns out, shall we? For this endeavor I got some tightly woven, stiff, not stretchy, that's important, um, cloth and two embroidery hoops in different sizes. Embroidery needles of category 6. I have no clue what that means, but the saleswoman advised me to those and yeah, I think it has something to do with their sickness, but I have no clue. And lastly, I got embroidery thread, which is made of six individual threads. I did embroider some stuff before, but I never was really confident in it. So I decided to refresh my knowledge with a Skillshare class. The link to my Skillshare class about anime glass painting is in the description box. Please click it, it's a great one. But today we are going to paint with threads, so I highly recommend Imogen White's class Felt Patches with Hand Embroidery if you need a step-by-step -step tutorial with way easier designs than I chose here. I don't know why I always start with these most complicated stuff, it's... Uh. I realized yesterday that I would also need grey embroidery yarn and now I'm thinking about going out again and purchase some grey. That happens when you don't plan a project thoroughly. <laughs> When I came back, I continued with the designs. I'm going to do four individual patches of the hands of our beloved Yujutsu Kaisen quartet. Yuji with Sukuna's mouth, Gojo's domain expansion pose, Fushiguro's demon dog pose and Kugizaki holding hammer and nails. I adjusted the sizes digitally and simply printed them out. My printer is ancient, so the lines were too faint and I just went over them with a marker again. So these are the four designs that I want to embroider as patches. And I cannot decide with which I want to start, but I think I'm going to start with Yuji's hand. Here's where I made my first mistake. I used way too much fabric and had a ton of excess around my embroidery hoop. It's nice to have some for tightening the fabric in between, but in this case it was way too much and just wasteful. Next time I'll use less, because this fabric was expensive. To transfer the picture onto the fabric I used my light box. You can do it at the window, but I mean I have a light box and I love this thing. It's one of the best birthday presents I ever got, it's just 
so convenient. I used a plain pencil, which wasn't the most convenient. Next time I'll use something more permanent. The lines will get stitched over anyway, so it doesn't matter if it stays on. Oh, and I also drew it in the inside of the hoop. That was intentional. Um, I just wanted the fabric to lay flat on the surface to like trace through it. Uh, I flipped it later. Okay, so... I took the Skillshare class of Imogen White and she said that you will need a thread that it's, is about as long as to your elbow and then I cut this and then since the thread is made out of multiple little threads I'm going to split it and the lady at the shop told me to only take two strands for like fine work like I want to do thread the needle I'm about to make my first stitch I'm afraid. <laughs> oh boy. Is that right? <laughs> I don't know. I have to rewatch the class. And I did it all wrong. <laughs> Let's redo this or undo this. That's that's the technique, but I think I have to go into the same hole because this is too far apart, I guess. Okay, again. So, I basically started with a chain stitch for the outlines. I won't explain how this works because this isn't a tutorial and I'm very bad at describing such things. So yeah, the chain stitch was the best choice because it was broad enough and also hides some minor mistakes very easily as opposed to a back stitch, for example. embroidered all the way around and also started doing the details inside with this chain stitch but I undid parts of it because it was way too chunky for the fine details so I switched to a back stitch for Sukuna's mouth and the other lines inside of the hand. Here's where I made my second mistake. I did all the line details before filling in the rest of the hand. You see that the filling stitches kind of swallow the most details later. This resulted in me stitching over all the details again after I filled the patch in, which as you can imagine was just double the work and took me double the time. Hi, I'm too lazy to dismount my camera, uh, so you have a great look at my forehead wrinkles. Uh, <laughs> it's day two of my stitching patches journey adventure project. And as you have seen like a few seconds ago, I finished the outlines and also 
filled in the tongue already. And the only thing I have to do now is to embroider the pattern on Sukuna's tongue and fill in the rest of the hand with white. And I guess that's a really time consuming and really boring procedure, so uh, I'm going to put a time lapse here. This looks so squishy. <laughs> little update um, this filling in takes so long that I decided that I won't film the whole process I don't really know what I'm doing I'm trying to follow a pattern here but don't know if this works I think that I have to go over the outlines of the mouth and like the finger folds uh, again later just to clean it up a little bit yeah I keep you updated, I guess. Hello. This is just for protection because I would have destroyed my fingertip by now. I'm almost done with the white. Overall, I'm pretty content with the outcome so far. When I'm done with the white and with the outlines, I'm not done at all. <laughs> I have to sew on the backing because I want I don't want this to be the raw back. <laughs> For the backing, I used some stiff fabric I had lying around. I think it was a cut-up tote bag or something. In Imogen's class, she used an iron-on adhesive to stick the two layers of fabric together. But I don't have this iron-on stuff and I didn't want to ruin it with any kind of glue. So I just put them together in the embroidery hoop and started outlining again. This time with a satin stitch to smooth things out. That's all I have left. And I think I made some mistakes. As you can see here, uh, when I was stitching the details in the fingers, like the, the lines here, I just thought, ah, why tie a knot there? Just hop over to the next finger. But I didn't think about 
that I'm going to cut out the fingers here and snip through this thread. I mean I sewed it tight with the outlining here but I don't know if that is enough to secure the thread in itself. I will see. I, can, I can't do anything about it now. Um, but yeah, I'm still not done. conclusion I love it it's the exact same as with my glass painting um, I started it and was afraid that I wouldn't be talented or wouldn't be good enough to pull this off but I convinced myself uh, of the opposite and I'm obsessed now I think anyways Tell me in the comments down below if you would like to see a part two of this video where I show the fully patched up jacket in the end. Um, otherwise, follow me on Instagram and TikTok where I will definitely post the finished result. And until then, see you next week for a new vlog. Bye! <laughs>